Hello, my name is Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Car Suspension Over 120 Years of Ride and Handling. The title of this video is How Much Don't You Know About Car Suspension? What am I talking about? Well, I was talking to an engineer the other day, and he was designing a new car suspension system that he wanted to achieve all sorts of great things. He sent me a copy of his design, and I was looking through some of the details. And looking at it, I realized it took some elements from 1950s air suspension systems and also some elements from 1960s hydrolastic systems. But he knew nothing about either of those systems. He was trying to reinvent the wheel. If you don't have an understanding of what well, a technical history, in this case of car suspension, you've got nothing to compare your designs with, you've got nothing to assess current designs with. But surely all those systems were really basic and primitive, weren't they? No, they weren't. And if you want that context or understanding, you've got to look at what has come before. So here's an example. 1950s US car air suspension system. Let's have a look at it. It's got a compressor, it's got accumulator tanks, it's got height control valves. Wow, a bit more complex than I thought they had back then but have a look over here at this graph. Here we have wheel travel, naught there, going to rebound there, going to compression there. And here we have rear wheel rate, rear wheel spring stiffness in effect. Look how it rises on rebound and rises on compression. Can you tell me one steel spring car that can do that? It gets stiffer, as it gets into bump and it gets stiffer as it gets into rebound. That's exactly what we want to provide highest degree of comfort. 1950s air suspension systems. There's basically no cars that are doing that today using steel springs. Or what about another one? I mentioned hydrolastic. I think one of the most sophisticated suspension systems ever created. It doesn't use separate dampers. It doesn't use separate springs. They're all integrated into one little package, a compact package. Here's one of these little compact packages. It gets pushed up from the bottom. The suspension arm moves this diaphragm up. It pushes fluid, and it's just a water-based fluid, through the damper valves. The dampers are built into the spring. And then the spring itself is this cone rubber which gets deflected. It changes in damper strength with deflection. No dampers do that today. And it's compact. And, and here's the really key exciting part, it connects the rear suspension to the front and the front suspension to the rear, reducing the amount of pitch over bumps. Today's cars are typically abysmal in their pitch uh, aspects, they pitch fu furiously. And you can see that. You have a car coming towards you at night and you watch its headlights flash as it pitches up and down. This system was fitted to the Mini, the Wet Minis, the Morris 1100, the Austin 1800. Extraordinarily good ride. I go into quite a lot of detail in my book. Different pitch fre frequency compared with different bounce frequency, different roll frequency, just the most amazingly sophisticated system, and yet it was fitted to quite cheap cars. And another, back to the 1940s this time, the Citroen 2CV interconnected front rear suspension on a cheap car, reduced pitch, just extraordinary good ride quality. I was lucky enough to go for a ride in the 2CV down this muttered, uh, muttered, muddy, dirt, rutted track and the car just rode absolutely superbly. I've just driven my wife's Mercedes up that same, uh, that same track. The, the Citroen was in a different league from the point of view of ride comfort. Not only did it have interconnected front rear suspension, it also used tuned mass dampers to stop wheel hop. Just extraordinarily advanced and sophisticated, and dare I say it, I don't even know of one car of today which has that degree of sophistication in a low-cost car. Morris Olley, 1930s GM engineer, X rolls royce he invented the concept of flat ride, low pitch ride, and to achieve that, he had to go to independent front suspension on all of those GM cars of the late 30s or mid to late 30s. Oldsmobile here, 
double wishbone front suspension back in the 1930s. And actually reading Ollie's rationale for taking that approach is just absolutely fascinating. So it's easy to think that car technology is now so much better than ever before. And look, in some areas it is. Safety, uh, noise vibration harshness, energy efficiency, today's cars are really outstanding compared with almost anything from the past. But in other areas, of car technology, it's completely lacking now in innovation, areas like suspension. But it, if you don't know history of suspension, you'd never guess that. You'd assume the latest and greatest is always the best, when clearly it is not. But exceptions, yes, of course there are. I'll come right up to the current day in the book, and magnetic dampers are an example of a really great innovation where you can have different damping rates at different stroke speeds. You can develop a relationship between uh, stroke speed and damping, which you just cannot achieve with hydraulic dampers. Magnetic dampers are an example of a real uh, progress that's being made. But gee, you look at the rest of the suspension and you just think, wow, okay, really stiff springs, really stiff dampers, really big roll bars, and you call that an advance? Car suspension, over 120 years of ride and handling. The book's out now. It goes right back to the 1890s and then right up to the 2020s. Thank you.